What is going on, everybody? Today, we'll be talking about five reasons I think Michigan can beat Alabama. I'm going to be doing one of these videos for each of the teams and why they can win their playoff matchup. And I've been doing a lot of playoff videos, and I've had a lot of fun making them. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the content that I've been posting for you guys. But we have a couple more playoff videos coming before January 1st, which is when the games will be played. And I'm very excited for the playoff games we will have between Alabama and Michigan and Texas and Washington. And this playoff has the chance to be legendary. And I really do think it's open this year. But we will also have a video out next week previewing the national championship game. Whoever is going to be in it, it's going to be an awesome game. So I'm excited about that. But before I get into this video, let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. If you guys love college football, then this is definitely the channel for you because we post a ton on this channel. And we got a lot of big things planned for 2024. So tune in for more videos every day. In this college football offseason, I will have a lot of videos. But everybody be sure to set new goals for 2024. But happy holidays, everyone. And without further ado, let's give five reasons on why I think Michigan could beat Alabama. And for the first reason I think they have a shot at beating Alabama, it's because they have their head coach back. Michigan hasn't had head coach Jim Harbaugh half the season, and they've had a lot on their shoulders with all the cheating scandals and their coach being suspended many times, and etc., etc. But Michigan has blocked out all the noise and basically dominated everyone they have played, regardless of the circumstances. They had a couple close games, but for the most part, nobody has really competed with them, and they've been dominating all season. And Michigan also found a way to beat Ohio State for the third year in a row. And are they better with having Jim Harbaugh back? I don't know, but you'd have to believe it will play a difference. And the month to prepare for this game may just help this Michigan team. But there has to be a sigh of relief knowing you will have your head coach back. And basically, all you have to do is focus on the main goal, and that's winning a national title. And it starts with beating a very scary Alabama team led by Nick Saban. The second reason I think they can beat Alabama is because of running back Blake Corum. Blake Corum has been a huge piece to that Michigan offense that is really focused on running the ball for the most part. And in big games, Blake Corum has led the way for this team. And he gets every possible inch when running the ball, and he is tough to bring down. And it helps him even more when he has a great offensive line blocking for him. But it will be interesting to see if Blake Corum can give that Alabama front seven some trouble. But it definitely will not be easy to run the ball. Just look at how Alabama did against Georgia. They were really tough up front. And Alabama has been playing really good lately. And they actually held that Georgia rushing attack to 78 yards. But Blake Corum is possibly the best running back in the country. And he has possibly the best offensive line in the country blocking for him. So it's going to be really tough to stop that rushing attack no matter how good your defense is. Because I guess I should mention that they also have a really solid backup running back in Donovan Edwards. But it will be interesting to see that battle up front between Michigan and Alabama on both sides of the ball really. And the team that wins the line of scrimmage may just win this game. But the third reason I think Michigan could beat Alabama is because of quarterback J.J. McCarthy. And this kind of leads on with the last reason. Because if Michigan struggles to run the ball, which may happen, then they will need to see J.J. McCarthy throw the ball very well. And Michigan will need to have more passing yards than they did against Ohio State and Penn State. They haven't really had to pass the ball much in big games. And they've hardly had any passing yards. But J.J. McCarthy is one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the country. And he makes the right plays. But Alabama's secondary is probably the biggest weakness on their defense. And they gave up 250 yards to Georgia passing the ball. But all around, I guess I shouldn't say their pass defense is bad. Because it's actually pretty solid. But their defense is all around scary. And I'm just picking one part of the defense that is probably the worst. But what I'm saying is Alabama's secondary may just be the easiest part of the defense to attack if Michigan cannot run the ball. But I really do expect a ground and pound game from Michigan. And it should be a battle up front. But J.J. McCarthy needs to be ready to step up and play the best when it matters the most. And I don't think you'll be able to beat Alabama only running the ball like you did against Penn State. But Alabama right now is probably playing the best defense that they've been playing all year. And we are going to need to see that Michigan offense clicking on all cylinders. And it means J.J. McCarthy will have to play a factor in this game if Michigan wants to win this game. Because you're not just going to win the game only running the ball. You're going to have to play a complete game on both sides of the ball. And he definitely cannot make any crucial mistakes in this game. Because ultimately one mistake Georgia had against Alabama cost Georgia the game. So Michigan has to play a clean game. And J.J. McCarthy has a 74% completion percentage on the year. So I expect him to play somewhat of a clean game, and he should be a very smart player, and he will definitely play a factor. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. But the fourth reason I think they can beat Alabama, and it might be the biggest reason, but it's because of their defense. 
let's just look at some of the rankings on the defensive side real quick. And obviously, they do have the number one scoring defense. And they are the only team in the country to hold their opponents to an average of single digits as they do hold their opponents to 9.5 points per game. But they also rank number 6 in rushing defense. And they are second in passing defense. But let's be real, the Big Ten does have some pretty weak offenses. So maybe their defense isn't better than Alabama's. But maybe it is. We don't know that yet for sure. And that's why these games are played, to determine who is the best. But their defense will definitely play a factor in this game. And another thing I should mention is that they are one of the best at forcing turnovers in the country. They've had 16 interceptions on the year, and they have forced 12 fumbles. And they have also had 33 sacks on the season. So their defense could basically do everything. And they can also make plays within special teams. But they will need guys like Jalen Harrell on the front seven to make it tough for Jalen Milrow. And we will need to see pressure from that Michigan front seven. Because Jalen Milrow is a tough guy to stop. And if Michigan could get the pressure on Jalen Milrow... I expect Michigan to have the advantage in this game because that defensive line of Michigan can be scary. Another guy that will play a factor in this game is leading tackler Junior Colson. There's many guys on the Michigan defense that can really make it tough for that Alabama offense that really can pass the ball well. And it'll be interesting to see Alabama's offense against Michigan's defense. But Jalen Milrow will be a tough quarterback to stop. But it starts with getting the pressure and making him make tough decisions and possibly forcing him to turn the ball over, which Alabama did not do against Georgia. And like I said, Michigan is really good at forcing turnovers. But for the fifth and final reason I think Michigan can beat Alabama, it's because Michigan has a lot to prove in this game, and they will be fired up. There's a difference between being motivated and actually executing. Because in the end, the only thing that really matters is how well you execute in the game, and how complete of a game you play. But look at the history of Michigan's playoff success. It's really not that good, and they're 0-2, and they also lost to Alabama a few years ago in a non-playoff matchup, and they also lost a playoff matchup to Georgia, so they've lost to the SEC many times. But maybe there comes a time where you get over that hump and find ways to win the big games, because making it to the playoffs three times isn't easy to do, and you'd think they would learn from their past mistakes. And they will be fired up to prove everybody wrong and show why this is the most complete team that they've had, and I do believe this team is better than last year. They've had some key guys on that team return. And they've been playing football at a very high level. But this is going to be a big test against Alabama. Because nothing is more scary than playing Nick Saban in Alabama when they are underdogs. This is kind of a weird game to me. I feel like Michigan should be big underdogs in this game. Because of their past playoff success and the head coach's success. But ultimately Michigan went 13-0 and have looked really good all season. So a lot of people believe in this team. But like I said, you can talk the talk. But you have to be able to walk the walk. And that means Michigan can talk all they want but they will need to perform on the field when it matters the most. And we will need to see Michigan actually come out and play their best football and don't ruin their chance at making the national championship. This is very similar to last year. They finished undefeated, made the playoffs, and were favorites to win, but they lost. Will they lose this year? I don't know, but they're favorites in this game. But this time around, the only thing that I really say is different is that they've had a lot of outside noise and they've had the cheating scandals and they haven't had their coach half the season. But this Michigan team may be a lot better and they might finally get the job done. It's really do or die for Michigan football right now, because who knows what will happen in the next couple of years. But anyways, I'm definitely excited for the Rose Bowl between Michigan and Alabama, but that is going to do it for the video. Be sure to like the video, and if you are new, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then this is definitely the right channel for you, because we post a ton on this channel. And I will be posting more playoff videos this week. I'll be doing videos similar to this one, so be sure to tune in for more videos the next couple of days. And also be sure to tune in next week when I preview the big national championship game between 2P Determined and 2P Determined. But you guys let me know in the comments who you think will be in the national championship. But I hope everybody is enjoying their holidays. And I hope you guys are excited for the new year. And everybody be sure to set new goals for 2024 because it's a new year. And next year is going to be awesome because January 1st kicks off with some awesome bowl games and playoff matchups. Then January 8th is the national championship. Then you also have the start of next season, which will be very hyped up, but it will be a long wait. But next season is going to change the landscape of college football forever with the start of the 12-team playoffs and the start of basically super conferences, which is basically what it is. So there's some positives and negatives, but I'm definitely excited. But let's end this video now, and peace out everybody.